Hello everyone and welcome to the next instalment in English Guy Drives, my little travelogue out here in beautiful western North Carolina. And if this is the first one in the series that you've watched, uh, go back and check out my other videos. In, in particular, check out the last one that I filmed which featured a Shelby Mustang GT500. That was quite a thing. Now today's video is one of many firsts for me. You see, this is the first Hemi-engined car that I've ever driven. This is the first Charger that I've ever driven. And I do believe, unless my memory is failing me, this is the first Dodge I have ever driven. This is a 2007 Charger RT. I don't know whether it's equipped with the performance pack, but that shouldn't make too much of a difference. Now, for my European viewers, what this is, is the, um, it's the Chrysler Land Bastard. It's a big old four-door saloon or sedan, delete as applicable, with a 5.7 litre hemispherical engine at the front. Now, if you're not sure what that magic hemi actually means, please go and look it up. It's all to do with the shape of the cylinder heads, basically. Now, this car is a uh, stark contrast to the GT500. Now, I'll get onto the many reasons why, but there is one thing I really do quite like about this 340 horsepower, two-ton V8-engined muscle car. It's the wife's car. In fact, it belongs to my host Trey's sister-in-law. And this is not actually an unusual thing around here. I've seen many muscle cars, in fact, a lot of Dodges, driven by the ladies. That might seem like a very sexist observation to make, but, well, Back home, you don't generally see women driving performance cars, and you certainly don't see them driving cars like this, but out here it seems, well, all very normal, really. Unfortunately, my first impressions of the Charger are not particularly stellar. It's not the most shapely of all things. I have to confess that the new Charger, in particular the Hellcat, is a good-looking car on the large side, as with all American vehicles, but I actually genuinely do like it. This one, not so much. It's a little bit weird and haphazard in the styling department. In fairness, I wasn't really in love with the looks of the GT500 that I've just jumped out of either, but that is at least a more cohesive design. Now, this car is also automatic, not the most exciting gearbox to use. There are no paddles down here, and it does have a, a manual override down here, which is pretty hideous to use. I've got a very useful dial down here telling me which direction I'm pointing because that's exactly what you want in a performance car. The gauges are all quite simple. There's a slightly terrifying handwritten note down here telling mummy I love you very much and I can't help but look at it and kind of get images of those glorious patriotic American action films where the hero is willing to make that last sacrifice and they look down at the cockpit of their F-15 and they see a little picture of their family. It's a nice personal touch. Unfortunately, the, um, the, the general feeling I get from the interior of this car is what a bucket of shit it is. Um, everything in here is basically a kind of nasty plastic. The leather on the seats hasn't worn that well. However, the car has 160,000 miles on it, which is quite impressive for a car that's not really that old. It genuinely does get a lot of use. And as mentioned, that engine with 340 horsepower out of 5.7 litres isn't really trying very hard. And sadly, this car's exhaust sounds like it's pretty standard, so unlike the GT500, we're not going to get much of an eargasm if I boot it through this tunnel. But it sounds pretty decent, if very muted. I think if I had one of these, the first thing I would do would be to sell it. If I had one of these and some sort of gypsy curse bound me to it, the first thing that I would do would be to put an aftermarket exhaust on it so it at least sounds like a fast car. I've seen a few of these big Dodge products on the road out here and they make an amazing racket. They don't seem to get away from you very quickly. Whereas the steering in the GT500 actually sort of surprised me with how good and direct it was, this not so much. It's, it's very light, as can be demonstrated with my little finger here, and uh, as you can see it also doesn't do too much. Now it's not quite as bad as the pickup that I'm driving, but nor is this really a sports car, nor in fairness would I actually expect it to be. There we go. Yes! 
Not a lot happens when you put your foot down, it must be said. And the gearbox is dim-witted and slow. Uh, the steering, I can't feel anything in, apart from the fact that the back end is not very happy that I'm trying to ask it to go around a corner. Now, contrary to popular belief, the Americans really can build good handling cars. It's something that they've been doing an awful lot of lately. The GT500 is probably the last of the line in terms of Fords what don't go round corners too good, and the new GT350s and so on are pretty damn good. The, the Corvette C7 is an amazing handling car, and I can't wait to see what they do with the new mid-engine C8. This, however, is everything you kind of expect from a Yank tank. And I should say that, of course, this isn't strictly a Yank tank because we are south of the Mason-Dixon line, so this is just an American wagon. I've also learned recently that the people around here do not like being called hillbilly rednecks. In fact, they prefer to be called Appalachian Americans. I'm trying to be as politically correct as I can. That's why I was helping the Confederates set up for the gun show this morning. Yep, 2000 RPM, not really that much happens. I mean, you'd think that at least a 5.7 litre engine with no power would have the decency to have some low down torque. Now, granted, I am going up a reasonably steep hill with a stunning view over there, and this car weighs an extortionate amount. I'm pretty sure this is over 4,000 pounds, so this is basically a two ton car. Where those two tons went, I really couldn't say because, well, there's nothing particularly luxurious in here. The engine's very lazy. I can only assume that most of the car is made out of sort of old girders and sort of, you know, cast pig iron. What's more worrying is the fact that when I was trying to mount one of my cameras, in fact, the one that's at the, the back uh, down on the side here, I'll cut to it now, that one, um, that's not a particularly solid piece of bodywork that's attached to. That's some of the flimsiest plastic I've ever had the misfortune to mount a camera to. And, and honestly, I do mean that's far flimsier than anything that I've ever felt on a Lotus, which of course isn't plastic, they are composite. And if you look at this car's brakes, they don't look like the sort of thing that are very capable of stopping a near two-ton vehicle. Maybe you get better ones with the more expensive version. I can't say. There is an SRT8, and that is the true performance version. Now, am I being a bit too harsh on this car? Um, no, not really. And I would genuinely, and I do hand on heart mean this, I would love to try one of the new chargers. So Dodge, if you're watching and you haven't already sent out a hit squad for me, I would love to try a new uh, Charger Hellcat, maybe when I come back to America, and you can change my opinion about what Dodgers are like. It's certainly been an interesting day for me because I've driven two American cars which in many ways were exactly what I expected of them. The GT500 at least had the decency to move and make a cracking noise and this one is, well, a little bit bleh. Its main redeeming feature of course is that out here these are quite cheap, quite commonplace, easy to run and the fact that it is probably quite thirsty is really irrelevant when you're paying the equivalent of about 60p a litre for your fuel. You really don't care. And it has at least lasted 160,000 miles and in all fairness with a, a, a quick spruce up this would still look like a pretty decent tidy nice new car. So it has at least lasted and I guess that's one sort of American reputation that we can disprove. They don't all instantly fall apart. Maybe next year it will, I couldn't say, but for now it actually is holding together quite well. And it is an easy car to drive, I guess if you saw it as like a more of an old man's car. Wow. And the McLaren 12C. Clearly very lost. Actually, I would love to be driving that down this road. But yeah, there we go. The Dodge Land Bastard RT. It is a bit of an American disappointment, which is a shame. But all is far from lost. This is an old car, and I do know that Dodge have made leaps and bounds in terms of, well, the way that they do things. So I look forward to trying more of their products and maybe a Hemi with a bit more go in it. But we'll see what the bounteous North Carolina can provide. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this short little trip through the Blue Ridge Parkway. We'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. 
please leave a comment below and hit the like button even if you didn't like the video it means a lot to me thanks for watching bye bye